All right, so something happened and here you are. I understand if you're really nervous and have lots of questions. We'll try to answer most of your questions with this video. So pay attention and speak up if one of your questions is not answered. I was basically like lost, you know, because it was my first time. If I could say one thing to somebody that was going into detention and, and they needed something, I would tell them to speak up. My advice to all the kids that's going into the detention is stay around the right people and do the right thing. You go there, stay to yourself, read. Your time will fly by and you'll be out before you know it. You're in a juvenile detention center. Let's just call it the center. If you aren't sure why you are here, ask. You have the right to know. We'll go over more of your rights later. But for now, listen closely. If you missed something, have a question, or didn't get a copy of the legal rights and detention handbooks, speak up. It's important for you to read your handbooks, so take them with you. You'll be here until a judge decides to release you. Depending on your situation, the judge may decide to keep you here, so you may be here for a few days or a few weeks. Hang in there. Just cooperate, listen carefully, and take advantage of the programs offered. Follow the rules, and you can earn extra privileges. Seek out and associate with the kids who seem to be on the right path. Before you know it, hopefully you'll be out of here and back to living your life. You have some important choices to make. You can choose to have a new beginning. And you can start here. Before I got sent to detention, I wasn't really going to school at all. But now I come to school every day and I get my work done. I didn't want to have to be coming in and out of jail. It's really important for you to write down the names of the people who can help you. You need to know these people. And more importantly, they need to know you. Speak up if you miss someone's name or phone number, your lawyer, your DCF worker, the DCF boss, doctors, or even the names of the staff here at the center. These are all the people who belong on your contact list. So write down their names and their contact information. If you're having trouble and don't know how to get into touch with your contacts, speak up and the staff member will help you. Everyone here wants you to succeed. So the staff uses a behavior motivation system. When you follow the rules, cooperate, and listen, you earn points. You can use your points to earn privileges such as a later bedtime, more phone time, or choosing something from the behavior motivation store. So I knew about the point system. You earn different prizes, whether it's special snack or extra phone time. I was using the point system to my advantage. Going to school here is one of the best ways to earn points and privileges. It's as simple as that. The staff will explain how the point system works. More information is in your handbook. You'll go to court soon after you arrive at the center. You have the right to a lawyer. After talking to my attorney, it made me less nervous. It made me more confident that we were gonna to try to work for what I told her I believe would be best for me. You can dress in your own clothes, but you'll wear shackles on the way to and from court. Going before the judge, yes, I was more nervous than scared. When I did actually go in there and sit down with the shackles on this, like, and sitting next to my grandma, I'm like, it's uncomfortable. The judge may decide to remove the cuffs once you are in the courtroom. Speak up and ask. A staff member has probably given you a tour of the center, but we'll cover a few things just in case you miss something. You came here with different clothes and maybe some personal belongings, like keys, a phone, or a wallet. Don't worry, your stuff is locked in the safe and will be returned to you when you leave. Or your family or guardian can take it home after they visit. The center has special rooms where you can visit your lawyer, your family, and other approved visitors. There's even a place for you to hang out and watch TV, play games, or just relax. While you are staying here, you will go to school. We'll talk more about school later, but always remember that if you listen to the staff, follow the rules, and pay attention, you can earn extra privileges. When the fire alarm sounds, be quiet and calm. Follow the directions of the staff. Fire drills are serious. Escape routes are posted throughout the center. A lot of information has been presented to you and more is to come. It's natural to feel overwhelmed and need a break. If you feel this way now, 
or in the future, remember, SOS. SOS stands for slow down, orient yourself, and self-check. You can take an SOS break whenever you need one. The most important thing I learned was just doing time sucks, period. Being in that cell is not no fun at all. My advice for the kids that will be going into detention now is just to do your time, get it over, talk to one of the GDOs. He would love to talk to you. That's what he's there for, to help you out. Speak up. Don't be scared to talk. You have many rights. If you are not sure what your rights are, speak up or check your legal rights handbook. If you don't have your handbooks, ask a JDO for them. They handed me a packet and the packet basically told me the rules and the regulations of the detention. I read some of it. It wasn't really enough time to like really analyze the text. It's important that you take the time to read the information. If you don't have a handbook, ask a JDO for them. You have the right to know why you have been sent here and what you are accused of. You don't need to talk to the police or anyone else about your charges. You have the right to have your parents or guardian with you when you are being questioned by the police. Someone at the center will notify your parents or guardian that you are here. You cannot get in trouble for exercising your rights. The staff may search you and go through your things, but they must tell you first. If you feel you were mistreated or wrongly searched, you can complain. This type of complaint is called a grievance, and coming up, we'll go over grievances in more detail. You have the right to a lawyer. Your lawyer is on your side. Your lawyer represents you and only you. Your lawyer will listen to you and speak for you in court. Learning how to have a lawyer, she was really good. Like, she helped me get through a lot of the stuff that I did do wrong and the stuff that I did do wrong. He or she will answer any questions you have about your case or your rights. Your conversations are private. Anything you say to your lawyer stays between you and your lawyer unless you say it's okay for your lawyer to tell someone else. If you don't know your lawyer's name, someone at the center can get it for you, or you can call your public defender's office. The public defender's office phone number is in your legal rights handbook. If you need to see or speak to your lawyer, don't be afraid to call or ask your PO to call for you. Your lawyer can visit you at any time during the day and early evening. If your lawyer doesn't visit, call their office. If you feel you are wrongly denied a visit with your lawyer, or you are not allowed to speak privately with your lawyer, you have the right to complain. This type of complaint is called a grievance. They had a sheet, and they showed us every day before school, they would show us where everything was at, if we ever needed to file a complaint. The staff will listen to you if you feel you have been mistreated or a rule has been broken by someone at the center. You cannot get in trouble for filing a grievance. If you have a complaint about the way a staff member or a kid talks to you or treats you, you have the right to file a grievance. If you feel a member of the staff has wrongly used force against you, you have the right to complain. The staff may only use force to protect you or other people in the center. We were playing basketball and things got a little out of hand. I put my hands on him and he kind of just like restrained me. It was basically just a calm me down thing. Like I shouldn't have reacted that way. Yeah, I've seen someone get restrained before because of a fight that happened in, in the gym. If their job requires them to restrain someone, then that's what they have to do. If anyone in the center threatens you, this is called an emergency grievance. You should speak up and tell your lawyer right away. A staff member or your lawyer will help you fill out the form. You have the right to receive an answer to your grievance in writing about what's going to be done to fix the situation. I knew that um, I had a right to say if there was something wrong or anything I knew I could go and tell my probation officer if I had an experience of this that I felt I shouldn't have had. That's one of the things that my attorney and my probation officer explained to me. Talk to your lawyer to understand this process. If you need more information on grievances, check your handbook and speak, speak up. up. As soon as I got to the detention center, they immediately explained to me that my mom can come and visit me and they explained to me who is eligible to come see me and who's not. I was able to call my mom every day for at least 15 minutes a day. If you'd like to make a phone call, just ask. You have the right to call your parents or guardian. You can call your lawyer, your DCF worker, and probation officer or PO. There are special times when you can make calls, so speak up if you need to call someone. 
you can only call like your parents or a guardian. You can't really call like friends or anything. You can only talk to certain people on the phone. If you are caught speaking to someone who is not approved, you may lose your phone privileges. You can also send and receive mail at the center. Mail to and from your lawyer is private. You can receive mail from your family and friends, as many letters as you can read. It was just me and my girl. Basically, that was the only person I sent mail to, and I feel like there's at least one person that cares that I'm not around. Yeah, I sent mail to one of my closest friends, because I know talking to her keep me occupied and focused, so she wrote me back. Then I started realizing, like, all right, at least someone's there, somebody cared for me. There's no limit to the number of letters you send, either. And the center provides paper, envelopes, and postage. The center staff will read your general mail, so don't write about topics that can get you in trouble. Don't ask anyone to bring you something you're not supposed to have. If you want someone to bring something to you in the center, it's a good idea to ask the staff first. Your rights and the mail rules are listed in your legal rights handbook. You're probably wondering if you can have visitors. The answer is yes. You have the right to see your family. And unless there is a safety concern with one of your visitors, the staff must allow visits. Family and guardians can visit during scheduled visiting hours. If your family cannot make it to the center to see you during normal visiting hours, speak up. The staff may be able to arrange an off-hours visit or video chat. Your family is allowed to come into the center, to a special room for family visits. This room is different from the room where you meet your lawyer or PO. My mom came to see me two times. I felt like I knew like, like that my mom really, even though I'm still getting, I was getting in trouble, that my mom still cared for me and that she was always going to be there for me. Of course, there are some rules to follow. Your visitors will need to pass through a metal detector to ensure that items which do not belong in the center are not brought into the center. Your lawyer or PO can explain all of this during a visit. And I was happy because my mom was able to come see me. My sister and brother came with my mother at one time. If you are here for more than three days, your brothers and sisters will be able to visit too. If there's someone else you'd like to see, like an aunt or an uncle, a priest, minister, or a rabbi, you can ask the superintendent. The superintendent is in charge of the center and can give you permission. In the dining hall, look for grievance forms and boxes. You'll find medical request forms and boxes and units. These forms and boxes are checked daily by each shift to ensure your concerns and needs are heard. Important information on mental health, self-esteem, and other important topics is available to you in units and common areas. Feel free to pick up this information whenever you want it and share it with your family or guardian. While you're here, you have the right to an education. You may have started school already, but we'll go over some important things. The classes are right here in the center and are taught by real teachers. If you have dropped out of school, you'll be re-enrolled. The teachers have requested your school records and grades. They'll place you with students in the same grade or skill level. When I got to detention, I started going to school. It's like I was doing work my little cousin should be doing. It was like little kid work and I felt that I can do more. If you feel you've been placed in the wrong classroom, speak up. If you're a special education student, speak up. You will be on a schedule, so don't worry about being late or when you'll have time to do your homework. You'll go to classes for about five hours a day. The teachers are here to help you succeed. Every week, teachers present awards for student of the week. Any school credits earned here will also be accepted by your regular school. So you shouldn't need to repeat the work when you go back. While it may seem different, from the school you are used to, classes at the center will cover the same subjects, such as English, history, math, computers, science, and gym. There is also a library with books and computers. School in detention was different, mostly because of the smaller classes um, and the teaching, like the teaching curriculum is way different. And it just is more eyes on you as you're while you're learning because it's all the JDOs are looking at you. Remember those points you mentioned earlier? You want points. I was aware of the point system at the detention center. To me, the point system is a good 
I did because I went to the detention to learn discipline and to learn that everything doesn't come to me easy. I was very aware of the point system. I always, I did everything I could to, to get as much points as I could. And that's, I, I'm pretty sure that's the reason why I got to leave so early is because I always had everything done. Points equal privileges, like more time on the phone. The JDOs explained the point system to me. You just gotta follow the basic rules, like wake up on time for breakfast, do your bread in the morning before school, do your hygiene, um, keep staying in a straight line, no talking while you're in the hallways, doing all your schoolwork while you're in school. More information on your education rights are in your legal rights handbook. During your stay here, you'll be on a schedule. You'll have a wake-up call, meals and snacks, school, time to relax, and a bedtime. You have the right to at least one hour of physical activity every day. And you'll have at least one additional hour for fun stuff like board games, art, and sports. We played basketball, woofer ball. We played some flag football a couple times. We'd have like arts and craft day, or we'll just have like a game board day. Like we'll play dominoes, Uno, Crazy Eights. I did do a lot of exercising and a lot of sports. Being able to do that relieves some of the stress. If you're not getting your scheduled time for physical activity, speak up to the center staff and tell your lawyer. Video games and other electronics are also available based on points earned. There are family days and you may even be able to get your hair cut or styled. Religious services and counseling groups are also on the schedule. You'll be required to attend support groups. Some groups teach life skills, like managing emotions or the dangers of substance abuse. If there is an activity or a group that you would like to see, speak up. There are many people on staff at the center, each one with a different role. I didn't understand the different jobs between the JDOs and the CPOs. It probably would have made a difference for me to understand the jobs. The JDO, or the Juvenile Detention Officer, is the person who you'll see the most. The JDO is there to keep you safe. Make sure you follow the rules and answer questions. Notice the JDOs wear uniforms. The CPOs will help you with any problems you may have at the center, and they will make sure that your health needs are met. Unlike the JDOs, the CPOs wear regular clothes. Your CPO will check in with you, or you can request to speak to your CPO. If there's something you need or need to talk about, you can talk to your JDO or CPO or your counselor. They're really there to listen to you, help you out, get you through your time faster. Check out your handbook for more staff and their roles. During your stay at the center, you are responsible for following the rules. This is for everyone's safety, but also because you can earn more points for extra privileges such as later bedtime or additional TV time. To earn points, cooperate and listen to the staff. Be positive and treat others with kindness. The rules were explained to me by the JDO that was present in the unit. I understand the rules on like the hands-off policy, the, like, the line, we gotta stay in line, and we got special rules to follow, like a curfew, the time we gotta go to sleep, the time that we gotta go into our units. If I had any questions, I would ask the JDOs. If you break the rules, you may receive a discipline report and lose points and privileges. So, try to remember follow staff directions, and be respectful of others. Use appropriate language, and be quiet when moving throughout the center. Respect your surroundings and the center equipment. Share with others, and be a good sport. And, and go, go to, to school. school. If you are sick or hurt, you can get medical care right here at the center, or at the hospital, if necessary. If your head hurts, or if you're sick to your stomach, or if you have a minor injury, like a cut. You can see the nurse or the on-call doctor here at the center. Emergencies are treated at the hospital. Center staff will decide where you should be treated. To request health care, you fill out a simple form. Speak up if you are too sick or unable to complete the form, and center staff will help you. Process, yeah, nurse, you just ask a JDO, um, I need code two. Then they'll bring you to the nurse, and the nurse asks you what's going on, she'll treat you with whatever the problem is. If you're taking medicine before you got here, or you need to start taking medicine while you're here, 
the nurse will get your meds and lock them up for you. Meds are not allowed in your bedroom. The nurse will deliver them to you when you need to take them. If the nurse has not given you a med and you think you need it, speak up. The nurse will check and make sure you're getting the treatment you need. If you have a toothache or having trouble with your vision or a more serious problem, a dentist or special doctor will be called to take care of you. If you're sad, angry, confused, or just need someone to talk to, there are people here to help. A counselor can help you deal with these feelings. I wasn't told that I could talk to a counselor because I'd I be having a lot of stress on me. So if I were told that I could talk to a counselor the whole time, I would yeah, I probably would have been talking to the counselor every day. Mental health care is no joke. So take care of yourself. And if something's bothering you, speak up. And don't forget, you can take an SOS break if you need one. Remember, slow down, orient yourself, and self-check. No one has the right to touch you in ways that make you feel uncomfortable. No one has the right to bully you, trick you, confuse you, or force you into doing sexual things. If someone touches you, in an uncomfortable sexual way, whether it be a kid in the center, a staff member, or someone outside of the center, speak up. This is called sexual abuse, and there are laws to protect you. Sexual abuse includes someone touching your private parts or making you touch theirs. It can also include rape or other things that make you uncomfortable. There is a zero tolerance policy for all forms of sexual abuse and harassment in this facility. There is also a zero tolerance policy for any form of retaliation against those who report incidents of sexual abuse or harassment. If you think you're a victim of sexual abuse or harassment, speak up, you have the right to report it. If you haven't received any information on sexual abuse or harassment, speak up, ask a staff member. And don't be afraid to ask questions, speak, speak up. up. Now that you are leaving detention, you face a lot of changes. I stayed in myself because I realized the people I was chilling with wasn't really there for me. So they can't do my time with me. They can't go to court with me. So do my time by myself. When I came home, I stayed to myself. The most important thing that I learned from being in a detention was that I needed to get my act right because I didn't want to be back there again. Now. My life is a lot different. I'm going to school, doing everything that I'm supposed to be doing. I'm on the right track now. You may or may not be going back to your home school. You'll deal with probation officers and your public defenders. You may also deal with DCF workers. You may even be required by a judge to wear a monitoring bracelet. I kept in contact with my parole officer because I was on parole and I had to see her constantly for years. And see how I was doing on my bracelet, how I was doing on probation period. Well, go over some important stuff now. Keep in touch with your PO and lawyer. And remember, speak up if something doesn't seem right to you or if you feel as if your legal rights are being violated. At the back of your handbook, there's a page for keeping track of important people who can help you. People like your lawyer, PO, doctor, or DCF worker should be on this list. Ask for help or write their names, phone numbers, and email addresses down. If you are going back to your home school, ask to see your guidance counselor to get back into your classes right away. I didn't receive no notification that I had to re-register for school. And so when I went back to school and I'm going to class and my teacher talking about why you here, you're not on my roster no more. Why am I not registering in school when I wasn't even away that long? I didn't know that you had to re-register. If you are having problems returning back to school right away, call your PO or the Center for Children's Advocacy for help. Their telephone number is in the back of your legal rights handbook. If you don't want to go back to your old school, talk to your PO. Your PO can explain your legal options. You have the right to change schools. If you are not living in a permanent residence, you have the right to go to a school in the district where you are temporarily living. It's important to remember that you can go to school as soon as you are released from detention. No one can stop you. See your handbook for more information and phone numbers. Once you are re-enrolled in school, make sure to ask your school to request your records immediately. 
Be sure to tell them your grade and whether you're a special education student. They don't need your parent or guardian's permission and all of the credits earned in detention will transfer. I didn't know about the credits being transferred or not, so I felt like I was left behind and come to find out I did get left behind because of it. Speak up if they put you in the wrong grade. Call your PO if you are having trouble. When you are ready to leave the center, all your personal belongings will be returned to you. Unless your family took them home, they've been locked up the whole time you've been here. Be sure you review the inventory list you signed when you first arrived. If you believe your personal belongings were left at the center, speak up. The center staff will hold your belongings for 30 days after you have left. There's much more information available to you. For example, if you're a special ed student or wondering if you could get any additional services, check your handbook or talk to your PO. After I got released, the only person I stayed in contact with was my probation officer because I'm determined to get out of high school so I can go to college and so I can, you know, further my life. The most important thing I learned from detention was to not go back. Stay in the house, do the right thing, come to school, get good grades. I'm not trying to be the kid that I used to be. I like different now because back then I was like running wild on the streets, you know, I was gang active, so that all I knew was, you know, gang banging. Basically, I'm trying to better myself. Like I said, I got a job now. I got two nephews and a little a baby niece, so I got to be a better role model for them. I'm just trying to better myself so I can, you know, stir them in the right direction so they won't go in the direction I was going in when I was young. Always remember, if you have questions, speak, speak up. up.